My name is Neil Petwari. This is ESE 471 Digital Communications, and I'm going to talk about the general overview of why we're studying orthogonality and why it's going to be so critical over the course of our semester. So I'm going to start by talking about that the fact that we have a transmitter, it's transmitting over the air, I'm going to draw an antenna like this, it's going to send a signal and be, it's going to be received by a receiver. Okay, the problem is that in the, the course of this radio channel, um, alternatively it might be a wire, but regardless, there are going to be other signals on this channel. The channel is just a single analog medium. That is, that any signal in the area of this receiver is going to be received. So we might have other transmitters and those are going to send into the same medium and they're going to be received and lots of these are going to be contributing to the same voltage measured at this receive antenna so the question is how do we figure out which signal was sent by the transmitter and which were sent by these others it's the problem of separation whether the receiver can separate the different received signals and still be able to demodulate the information sent by the transmitter. So separation is key. Now we are engineers and we are allowed to design the communication systems that operate in this channel. So we do that um, and we design the signals so that they can be separated. What does it mean to be separated, to be able to be separated? Well, that's the idea of orthogonality. Orthogonality is just the idea that two signals can be separated from each other at the receiver. Okay, so let's do an example. And the simplest example that we have are using sinusoids. Here's an example of signals that might be on the channel at the same time. So for example, my transmitter might be sending this signal. Another transmitter might be sending this signal and they add together in some way on the channel. And I'm not even sure that we'll know ahead of time exactly how they add together at the receiver. Here's one example of, of a combination signal. That is some linear combination of these two signals. So if I call this signal S1 of T, and I call this signal S2 of T, then this combined signal is gonna be some linear combination. It's gonna be a constant multiplied by S1 of T plus a different constant multiplied by S2 of T. And then this total received signal, let's call it R of T, it's going to be equal to this linear combination. It's a linear combination because we don't have any effects that would cause these signals to be multiplied by each other or that would distort the cosines that are being received. So it's a linear combination. And the combination just uh, here, meaning that they're added together. The question becomes is how do we allow these signals to be designed such that they can be separated from the combined signal? Once they're separated, we can figure out what A1 and A2 were. We might have lots of different linear combinations that are possible. As another example, same two signals S1 and S2 of T, but now we've got three different linear combinations. These are three different sets of values A1 and A2, and the sum of them plotted on this right side of the figure. This is gonna have lots of different implications one of which is going to be the separation of the desired transmit signal from other interfering signals. The second important aspect of orthogonality is to allow us to be able to have our transmitter send two different streams of data at the same time. And finally, a third reason is that we can't just send one signal. Um, and then be done. Our transmitter is typically sending lots of information. For example, it might be sending a whole file. It might be streaming audio or video. It might be sending text. And typically these require more than one 
uh, one symbol sent at one time. We need to be able to separate the signals that are sent at different times. Okay, and that allows us to send a, a stream of information continuously, and even if those signals don't go to zero before the next one starts, we're still able to separate them at the receiver. So orthogonality is critical for all of these reasons.